Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. On the bench today is a Class D amplifier board. It's one of four that I have in from viewers and supporters to test out and uh, you know give a little review of. So I really do appreciate that. This one was submitted by a viewer. I don't know if he wanted his name mentioned but he also included $20 for supporting my channel so I do really appreciate that. I just got another board in the other day so that's a total of four now so it may not be in consecutive videos but I certainly have a lot of fodder now for making videos so uh, look forward to uh, doing some amplifier boards among other things so this came from Parts Express for $13 you can probably find it cheaper elsewhere and there's the catalog number, Mini Hi-Fi, High Power, 2.1 Class D, Audio Amplifier Board, 2 by 15 watts, stereo channel, it doesn't say here, but it also has a subwoofer channel, 1 by 30 watts. And uh, the information that came with it said that is 8 ohms. So, yeah, I'm already skeptical. Well, I, I know it's not going to do that number. Supply is 10 to 18 volts DC, but they recommend 12. So, you know, it can't do those numbers with 12 volts and 8 ohm loads. We'll measure the actual power, though. So, uh, looking at the board here, these connectors are your outputs. You have your left channel, your right channel, and the subwoofer. You have a barrel type power connector, 3 millimeter stereo input jack. Over here we have the main volume control. This little connector here has a jumper in it. You can remove that jumper and put a 50k pot in its place and that allows you to control the subwoofer level if you don't want that you can just put the jumper in here at the position here it just passes the uh, signal on through to the subwoofer channel or if you move it move it down between this pin and the middle pin it'll turn the subwoofer channel off this connector here if you short those pins together it puts the amplifier into standby mode so you know just leave it open if you want the amp to run or I guess you could add a switch to uh, put it into standby mode if you want you notice it's a filterless design there's no filters so in order to uh, display the sine wave on the scope you know the test signals on the scope I have to use a filter so I made this filter and I just had parts laying around it's not necessarily ideal for the amplifier should be good enough for uh, uh, taking some power measurements but we might start to see some roll off at 20 kilohertz so uh, frequency response test at the higher end of the audio spectrum might be meaningless since I'm using this filter and I had to uh, you know the, the filter has to connect to ground so I uh, connected it to a ground point and this will connect to either, um, well it connects to one channel because they are bridged outputs you have to have the two connections plus the ground and then on the output of the filter you just have the two lines coming off there. So one thing I'm a little concerned about is the size of this heat sink. It uses two of those power amplifier ICs and this uh, pretty small heat sink is cooling both of them so I don't know if it's capable of handling 4 ohms we'll test it with 8 ohm loads and I'll see how hot the heat sink gets see if I want to continue on with 4 ohm loads okay I have the speakers hooked up here power and signal have the channel 2 set up on the power supply for 12 volts so let's see if it goes bang oh 
Okay, it's stabilized. The current draw is about 70 milliamps, just sitting idle here. So that's pretty good. It's not drawing a whole lot of power. These are the two stereo speakers, and that's connected to the subwoofer channel. So I'll give you a YouTube music sampling here. Okay, yeah, it does give a lot of bass. So to even out the bass, depending on the efficiency or sensitivity of your speakers, you might want to add the control to turn the bass down because it does seem a little overwhelming to me. So what I'll do now is I'll take this connector out and move it down to this position and we'll see just what the stereo channels alone sound like. Okay, I moved the jumper. Yeah, it's definitely rolling off the stereo channels. There's hardly any bass to the main channels. So if you're concerned of using smaller speakers and uh, using a crossover, you don't really need to because it will roll off the bass for you to the main stereo channels. A couple other things of note. Some of the other Class D boards I've tested had a lot of background hiss. And by placing my ear close to the, the tweeter here, I don't really hear much hiss. There is some, but it's nothing to be concerned with. I don't really get into measuring that because it just it's just extra effort I have to do. Putting my ear and listening for hiss is good enough for me to see if it's going to be a problem with hiss. Another thing is, at very low volumes, I had some of these Class D boards. I think it was the PAM 8610s. I had a couple of those boards. At low volumes, it sounded really distorted. And I don't hear that with this. There is one issue I did note. This amplifier has a gain of 26 dB, and that's not quite enough with the uh, headphone type outputs. With the music player turned all the way up, and this turned all the way up, the amplifier was not reaching its limits. It wasn't clipping or anything. In fact, it could get a lot louder. So uh, it tells me it doesn't have enough gain for handling these uh, headphone type out devices like a phone or a music player. So in order to do the power test I'll have to connect the uh, preamp so I can crank up the source signal a lot more. Okay so I connected 8 ohm resistors to all the channels, non-inductive of course, and I uh, have the power supply set up. Notice that the current has increased. Before, when the amplifier was sitting idle with the speakers connected, it was drawing only 70 milliamps, and now it's drawing 120 milliamps. Why did the current increase? Well, the inductance of the speaker coil is high enough that it doesn't pass the switching frequency of the amplifier, which is 330 kilohertz, 333 kilohertz roughly. And it jumps around, but it's at 334 now. So if I zoom in on that, you can see the switching frequency there. And there's very high crest factor type pulses. That's because it's sitting idle. There's no music or anything playing. So let's play the music now. And it's hard to see, but it actually changes the duty cycle of that pulse. So let me turn that down. You can kind of see the uh, the music waveform. Well, I need to see a sine wave to calculate the power. You can probably uh, capture some waves and calculate it this way, but I want to get the waveform on there, so uh, or the sine wave, so I can do my usual calculations. 
Okay, so now I connected the scope probes to the channel that has the filter, and now we're seeing an audio signal. Okay, let's get a power measurement here. So we have the one kilohertz signal. Crank it up into clipping. And I like to observe the clipping behavior. I don't see any oscillations or anything going. So that's good. So let's tune it out of clipping. Right about there. Looks like it's uh, about 7 volts right on the money. So 7 volts RMS squared is 49 divided by 8 ohms. So we're putting out 6.125 watts of clean undistorted power. So doesn't sound that impressive, but if we test at 4 ohm loads, we'll probably get more like 12 watts or so. The heat sink is getting pretty warm. It's drawing about an amp and a half off the supply. The resistors on the subwoofer channel are not getting warm because it does roll off well before 1 kilohertz, so it's really not putting much of a signal out. I'm measuring one of the uh, stereo channels, by the way. Okay, I moved the filter board over to the subwoofer channel. And, of course, the subwoofer channel has a low-pass filter, so I have to measure it at a lower frequency, so I'm measuring it at 30 hertz. So we'll just crank this up. There's clipping. Uh, again, good behavior on the clipping. There's no oscillations. Now, you do see it slanted a little bit. I'm sure there is an input capacitor, which you know has a lower frequency cutoff. And that's what causes that. But at any rate, let's dial out the clipping. It's about the same, really. Around 7 volts. It's about 6 watts. If I didn't mention it before, the subwoofer channel is handled by one of the chips. So what happens is the chip has two bridged outputs and they combine those two outputs together called paralleling. So it's a parallel bridge output. And when you parallel amplifiers together, it does not increase the amplitude of the signal. It does allow you to use a lower impedance load. So you could get away with using a lower impedance load and getting a larger output. But again, the limitation with this board is the size of the heat sink. It's not the ICs itself. It's, you know, they just use this tiny little heat sink. Okay, so what I want to do now is find the crossover point of the subwoofer channel. So I set the scope up so the signal is touching, the peak of the signal is touching this graticule and the bottom is about down on this graticule. And it uh, looks like we're getting a 4.17 volt RMS signal. So at the crossover point, that signal would be about 71% of this, or it'll drop down to about 2.95 volts. So I'm connected to the function generator and I'll just, you know, crank it up until the signal hits that voltage I mentioned and it's getting smaller I'm getting the oh it was right on it wasn't I okay so we're at 86 Hertz so it's 3 DB down point is 86 Hertz that's its crossover point so now let's just see how low a frequency it will handle before it hits uh, 2.95 volts again. Okay, starting to roll off. Let's see where it starts. We're out 35 hertz. It's starting to drop a little bit. So it's not flat. Pretty significant. Let's go to 20 hertz. Okay, that's 20 hertz, and it's dropped down to 3.5. Five six, it looks like. 
and there you go 14 Hertz it's not completely flat at the low end it does roll off before it gets to 20 Hertz you'd have to have pretty good speakers to notice that okay so I'm back on the stereo channel and I'm going to find the crossover point turn the function generator down oh, we're about there already so the crossover point is 106 Hertz Another thing I noticed, I'd ha I had to turn the level down when working with the stereo channels. They have the bass cranked up on this thing. So that's why I'm saying you might want to put the control in for the bass, the potentiometer. And what about high frequency roll off? It's already dropping pretty severely. This has to be due to my filter. I'll have to uh, look at the uh, values I'm using. I just grabbed the parts out of my drawer. I know the uh, inductors are kind of large, so it does make sense that it would roll off. But like I say, this is the filter. It's not the amplifier. I would expect the amplifier to be pretty close to flat all the way out to 20 kilohertz. So, yeah, that's one reason I really not too concerned with the uh, frequency response test especially on the higher end of the audio band okay I'll take a look at distortion here there's clipping so tune that out this is the 4.5 kilohertz pilot signal that's the fundamental there's a little bit of a third now it's possible the filter I'm using is introducing distortion I'd say the amplifier's pretty decent with distortion. Again, it's I, I can't really measure it with the equipment I have. Okay, to summarize my findings with the amplifier, idle current draw was 70 milliamps. Standby current draw was 20 milliamps, which is surprising. Usually when you go into standby, it drops down into the microamp range, but it still draws quite a bit of current so if you're running on batteries you don't want to put it on standby and, and leave it because it'll uh, vampire your batteries down even in standby mode again I got 6.1 watts using a 12 volt supply with 8 ohm load and like I said I don't recommend using 4 ohm loads with this given the size of this heat sink minimum operating voltage I tested was 7 volts. The low pass filter crossover point on the subwoofer part of the amplifier was 86 Hertz and the crossover point on the stereo side was 106 Hertz. I had no issues with the sound quality of this amplifier it sounded fine to me. However given some of its limitations it's not going to displace any of the amps that I chose as a top pick in a video I made a year or two ago. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Thanks for watching. Look at that. We have achieved peeps. There we go. Now you can see them. Three healthy little peeps. Yeah. Good. We'll see if they can fledge or not here in about a week or so. Beep, beep, beep. Any noise you make, they start popping their mouths up wanting food.